Hello there everyone, and welcome back to Empire Total War with the American Re Revolution mod. And we're playing as the Americans, or the American colonists. And last time around, we took George Washington and Nathaniel Green North to defeat an army under General Howe. And then we marched on to Falmouth, Maine, and hopefully we'll be able to secure Maine uh, from Loyalist forces. And that will enable us to get a second school by uh, taking the province, so we get the school at Brunswick, which hopefully allows us to quite quickly research uh, canister, I think is probably pretty good. And then we can switch over square formation to ring bayonet, so we'll will quickly advance before the British forces, as we're going to need that, since they outnumber us quite a bit so far. We start off with very few troops. Um, with that said, let's go ahead and actually complete this battle, and see if we can't move further. Uh, last time around, I think we suffered 400 casualties, while the British lost almost... I think it was around 900. So... Uh, Actually, our forces are quite equal, because they the British have gained an additional uh, 660 men, so that adds up, um, kind of, in comparison to what we lost, and the British lost. So, we're still, it's still kind of an even force, however, we still have cannon, and we have plenty of cavalry, so I'm pretty sure... We'll just ride them down. But with that said, let's go ahead and capture Maine from the Loyalists. Ah, how lovely. We get to fight in the daylight, which means we can clearly see everyone's uniform. Maybe not so nice uh, to look at the rebel force as they're wearing... I'm not entirely sure what is this. Looks like some kind of skinned animal. And then they also kind of all look like, I don't know what. Um, a little bit better as we go over to the Dragoons, I'd say. And then a little bit better still when we go over to look at the artillery actually wearing something resembling a uniform. Uh, and then we've got... Uh, oh, that was actually the General. These are the actual Dragoons. Even though the general is surrounded by dragoons as well. With that said, uh, we're attacking what was it called? Falmouth, Maine, uh, which we can see right before us. I'm expecting the British to set up in town, but I'm not entirely sure they will. They could very well set up here, which would be nicer because then my cavalry could work them a lot better fighting in the open. Uh, but just in case, uh, we've set up the troops ready to march into town. And the British have gone ahead and uh, actually made it easier for me by deploying outside of town. We're going to move quickly and hopefully the British will try to meet us out in the open rather than to go into the town. This was one of the things that I thought about when setting up, that maybe I should have set up out here just so that I could kind of... maybe not lure the British out, would be the wrong way, but they would come out to face me out in the open. And there we could use our advantage in cavalry. So we got three additional regiments. We've got Nathaniel Green, and then his dragoons, third light dragoons. It's going to situate next to the Moyland dragoons. Tell them to hold fire to start off with. They have a tendency to shoot each other. We started off firing towards the British uh, loyalists. Uh, looks. Kinda like we hit this house, possibly. Uh, I'm guessing they were firing for the garrison militia rather for the armed citizenry. So, uh, uh, 360 of the town populace, loyal to the king, has come out to meet us. And then further on, 
we have the town militia comprising of another 300 men and then the troops that survived from the battle last time has also once again come to the field <clears throat> 101 so roughly 231 uh, Royal Highland immigrants and further back here we've got the cannon and what remains of General Howe's bodyguard which comprises of five men at this point uh, and they're staying at the edge of the map so I'm guessing they kind of know what's uh, what's about to transpire oh yeah I was wondering cannon shots coming my way but the enemy of course has still has cannons I, I wasn't able to completely destroy the cannons last time so the loyalist militia is actually marching closer to me but I guess they have to get closer if they intend to shoot at me I will redirect the artillery fire towards said uh, armed citizenry and maybe we can scare them to surrender and see that our cause is just that we're not just trying to avoid paying tax seemingly they don't want to budge so we're gonna have to shoot them down all of them don't like the fact that they're attacking my cavalry are oh, they have another oh yeah the garrison militia fell back all the way to their cannon position I guess that's clever because they need to protect that okay so the armed citizenry is moving up to meet us but do they dare fire upon us Join us instead, brothers! Oh, right. I think we got our answer. We will halt. And return fire. Within one volley, plus with a cannon fire, the armed citizenry was defeated. And sent off the face of our face of the... Uh, I was gonna say something else, I don't know why I said face. Um, they were sent off that hill. I'm gonna move my dragoons into a flanking position, but it could very well be so that just holding this stone wall right here will be enough. And then um, with just musket fire that we will be able to uh, see off those Scottish immigrants as well. We'll have Nathaniel Green move up to the front. We're quickly moving into position. Ready to uh, hold off the armed citizenry as they're moving back across the field with the renewed vigor. And before they are able to fire, we have already killed 10 of their men. Behind the cover, they don't really stand a chance. And that battalion falls back and the armed citizenry fall back, leaving only one group of 88 men left over there. This time around, Nathaniel Green orders cavalry charge to see them off the field entirely and as soon as they're out of range of our muskets he'll call a general advance towards the British cannon position which we almost reach with our cannons I'll tell them to target that area and as we do that We'll take a closer look at us riding down the Loyalists. 
Revolutions are a bloody affair. And uh, we'll have to slay a lot of our countrymen. And some Scottish immigrants. Three Scots around there had kind of stood to face the Dragoons for a second. But they decided that uh, it probably was not going to go their way. Ah, uh, the, the remnants of the enemy commander is actually moving out onto the field. See if I can... Yes, I can target them. It's actually moving out to save the troops and engage our dragoons over on the right. It's probably not going to go too well for them. Um... Only about 111 of those men survived. Thing is, I don't want to get too close. Just for that cannon to blast my dragoons. What I could possibly do is avoid fire from uh, the garrison militia. And then fire from horseback. And uh, just shoot down the crew of that cannon. So that will help us immensely as uh, our uh, veteran Minutemen are marching forwards. Right, they fired, they managed to get two out of the crew, but they still have four men manning it, or actually three men. Oh, they're, they're turning the gun now on the cavalry. Will the Dragoons be able to fire once more and take that unit out? He fired his pistol at this range. Oh, they got one more. Would that be enough? That... Oh, he's gonna fire. And it took down three cavalrymen over on this side. I think with the second volley these guys will fire. That will see the cannon off the field. And then it's up to the Minutemen to clear out those uh, that garrison militia. Mm, that second volley didn't actually kill anyone. They're so close to the edge. Oh, you know what? They're not even that ready to fight us. The second shot missed. We're gonna charge. I'll tell the cannon to hold fire. And just in case, we might wanna send this one over here. Because these guys won't be ready to actually fight us. As we can see. We'll ride up to them. Give them an option to surrender and join us. Or we'll have to uh, shoot them down. Which at this point seems like a likely cause as uh, the game doesn't really work that way, does it? They kind of fall to panic, and uh, we all the sabers drawn, and to cut them all down. There's still quite a lot of them. Maybe I should have charged closer after the uh, the volley. Because then the, the, the morale effect would still be uh, present. They're actually holding a lot better than I thought they would. 
I'm not sure how many cavalry troopers we are losing. But the enemy has at least lost a uh, hundred people at this point. So one third. The Minutemen are coming in. I might want to disengage the cavalry at this point. Just because they're... Uh, they're going to play a very important part. That's a very good units. Going to tell the Minutemen to hold. And uh, open fire. On the militia. And with that, we are victorious. Decisive victory. Let's go back to the campaign map and say, see if we can't make some moves. Get some groovy moves, recruit some troops, and uh, capture more of the colonies. And here we have the statistics of that battle. Without the guidance of the British general, uh, they did a far lot worse than last time, or maybe it was I, who's getting better at understanding how the mod plays, that just play the battle a lot better. Um, we actually deployed 40 men less than the enemy, however, as we can see, we only lost 80 men while taking out almost 800 of the enemy. A lot of those were uh, just, uh, just uh, townsfolk pressed with muskets, uh, trying to defend king and country. A lot of it goes down to the dragoons, slaughtering their way through the enemy, and then the cannons as well, doing a lot of damage. Uh, and then some of the veteran men. Um, not entirely sure how a commander-in-chief was able to slay 58 men there at the end. Right. We captured Maine. And we uh, dispelled all British forces. However, at this point, we have lost quite a lot of men. We have gained a lot of chevrons, though. Especially for the cavalry. Um, gonna need a lot more men, aren't we? We haven't even gone through first turn. Um, we'll let, we'll, what we'll do is Nathaniel Green will give up all his three Minutemen and give them over to George Washington so he can continue and take Fort uh, Nashwalk in Arcadia so we can completely take the entire coastline here and that will make it quite hard for the British to come at us because they will have to pass through these dense foresters, which I imagine has a lot of, I mean, it doesn't in terms of game, in game, in the game mechanic, but I mean, there would probably be uh, a lot of Indians in between here, I'd imagine. And also, I mean, there's no roads really going this way, and we can see that the British infrastructure here is actually non-existent. So, bringing troops uh, from Quebec or Upper Canada will be hard, so taking out this will be quite important uh, to stopping the British from bringing down more troops. Nathaniel Green, however, will take his Dragoons and they will ride down to Philadelphia because we need to prepare for the coming assault of the British troops coming from the south. Um, and with that, we're going to go ahead and end turn and uh, see what the end... No, not before the school of New Brunswick goes ahead and starts to uh, research canister. And with that, now we will go ahead and take a look at the diplomacy really quickly. No more uh, people to trade with. So now I will end turn. Right, we've got a diplomatic message from the United Provinces. And they want to give us... Crack... Crango? Craco? Uh, some South American colony? Uh, in exchange for New York. They're gonna pay us 10,000. So I guess they won't really want to buy back New Amsterdam. How <laughs> however, uh, New Amsterdam is... That way, New York, they would split our colony is down the middle. Are you... wait, you, I was gonna say, are you working for the enemy? 
They are allied with the Great British. Uh, weird how I said the, the Great British. Uh, with Great Britain. Maybe it was a slip of the tongue because I like the British more. Um, no, thank you. We're not going to have you sabotage our plans. With that, we peasant farms constructed in New England. Uh, very good. Can we feed our rebellion? Uh, agent detected. Our agent was detected by British troops and dispelled from Annapolis, Maryland. Uh, but before he was, he could see the fact that Richard Kitchener and Humphrey Fowler is moving with their force north. Um, however, Philadelphia is a very, it's a very good stronghold. And now that we have the New Year's battalions, two New Year's battalions and the Virginia Dragoons there, it's uh, quite a formidable force. What I now notice is that the uh, there is no fog of war. Jesus, this is a rather la large force under Henry Addison with troop and cannon. It would be nice if we could get at least some native going against them. Uh, as of now, I cannot see any of the other European powers making any plays against them. We've got the Spanish, I imagine, building up the force here, ready to invade Florida. Um, then it might be naval action. They've lost one of their sloops, possibly in fighting the pirates, but I'm not entirely sure. Anyways, that would... Oh, no, they probably fought this Spanish navy, which weakens the British naval force and them to bring in forces uh, from their colonies. Where does the... F the French territories... I guess the French only hold this. What was the tr area that... Oh, the they wanted to trade this for New York. Let's go ahead and see. Where does the French... Oh, the French only has down here. I thought, you know what, we have the French, we have the Spanish, this is gonna go... The French only have that, and these islands. So I guess we can't count on the French that much. Spanish, however, hold a lot more significant amount of land. So we could hope them at least do something, and seemingly they have, as uh, we imagine that they are the ones that have attacked this uh, British force. There's actually two broken up Spanish fleets. It could be pirates. There could be a lot of things they've been fighting against. We don't know. Um, I do possess the ability, though, to recruit French troops. Uh, we've got French naval infantry. However, we'll try to stay with the really good New Jersey battalions. Well, now we got all of those battalions. Uh, which number is four. They've got 50 accuracy, which is pretty darn uh, nice. Nathaniel Green will make his move all the way down there. Uh, assuming control over the Philadelphia forces. Ready to see off the British if they decide to attack the fort. Which I doubt they will. At the same time, we've got colonial militia skirmishes. We're just going to send one over to New York. I can see the British are building a force in Upper Canada, possibly building on extra troops over here. Lord Dunmore's Ethiopian Regiment. Excuse me, but what? And then, they're not really building any there, but Upper Canada, they seem to be building. And also, wait, the British force over in Fort Newark is marching north. Could this be a trap to just lure... George Washington to get closer to t attack this? Or could it be something else? George Washington will gamble. Anyways, he's pretty good at retreating, so um, if, in case this was a trap, we can always retreat back if we want to. I'm going to build this up. And also, with the amount of money I have, I think we will invest in better roads so that we can quickly move from one place to another. Uh, the best troops we have here are colonial skirmishers. We can get another two there. 
The only thing we can get here is Native Americans, which I just don't want. Not because anything more than that those guys aren't particular. Range to 120 and 40 accuracy is pretty good. Oh, they outrange by 10 meters or so. Uh, morale is equivalent. You know, Native Americans aren't that bad. We're gonna get one then there to help us out. And then there's no more moves to make. Let's go ahead and take a look at diplomacy. I can't really do anything there. How's it going over here? We've won away from Square, which will do a lot to protect us against British cavalry charges. And let's see, how's my economy? 12,000 per turn, that's pretty darn good. Um, Samuel Adams. A little too clever. Minus happiness for the nobility. Res publica. Which gives him uh, prestige and management. Cloak and dagger. Gives us what? There is uh, something glamorous and dangerous about this man always has a taste for secrets, blah blah blah. But he doesn't really tell us. And, and then enlightened despot. I don't know if that one fits. The bill. Uh, ministers. Haven't really gone around to... I kind of want to kick out <laughs> Benjamin Franklin. He has only got two stars for the army. But then again, can I really kick one of the founding fathers? Management for treasury. He's got three plans for management of territory. Or treasury. Who the hell put him in charge of the army then? We're going to switch him over. There, suddenly we've got a big difference here. We've got massive boost. Who the... Bloody... What kind of person put him in, in charge? John Hancock, something of a banker. Well, I guess we'll put you there then. He, John Adams is honest. Gives him one plus to management, so he can be anything really. We've got Thomas Jefferson, status quo, and agrarian. That Virginia farmer. Uh, he doesn't like treasury, which kind of, I guess, because he didn't, he didn't want to establish a, uh, Federal Bank, uh, and then we got um, James Madison, which is a jughead. Um, I guess he, if anyone, will kick out James Madison. Bye. And we brought in Edward Grimston, which was worse, morally impaired, pious, and status quo. So here's a lawyer. We put a loyalist in government over the Navy, but then again, we probably won't need the Navy so much. At this point, anyways. Um, with that said, I mean, I could possibly do some investment by putting, like, put, putting down 2,500 on the trapper so we can get more fur. So we can sell and make more money that way. But the thing is, it's pretty close to the British border. And it's still, it's quite a lot of money. And I want to, as much as possible, uh, recruit a load of troops. Um, and I think we're going to go ahead and end turn once more just to see if I can make the jump up and take another province. Square formation. Very good. We move on to ringed bayonets. Uh, Benjamin Frankel... <laughs> Frankel? Benjamin Frankel. Benjamin Franklin gets frugal and thrifty. Minus two for management of treasury administration. He keeps a tight rein on the privy purse. Excuse me, but what? I thought I made a brilliant move by uh, uh, rearranging the cabinet to put Benjamin in charge being treasury of secretary. And as soon as he becomes treasury of secretary, he uh, becomes frugal and thrifty and doesn't want to spend any money. So those three extra points in management for treasury, that's like... I norm Normally you get like plus one or plus two. I have i don't think I've ever really seen plus three. And then he gets this minus two. But that's kind of... But he gets... Well, he gets 
minus two for treasury, but it gets one plus for management. So it's only really then one minus one. So it's not that bad. But that was uh, interesting. Richard Lee, I want him in my government. Tactician, agrarian, bondrian, styleholder, patron, honest. Why can't we have him? Richard Lee, I want him in government. Uh, first off, we kick that guy out and we guess Leslie Langlands, which is frugal and thrifty and a jughead. At least it's happiness for the lower classes. And he actually improves management from two points to four. So I guess we'll keep that. For, uh, for the others, I think we try to keep the founding fathers as much as possible. The British continue to retreat north, leaving this province more or less unattended, except for the fact that they actually recruited the Worcester Regiment. And put that in charge of holding on to... I'm going to ask them to demand surrender. There's only 800 people. We're quite clearly in range of outdoor resolving, but I guess we should probably fight that one. I'm wondering if I'm running away in terms of time of the episode. Don't want to make them too long, but then again, it's kind of a small fight that's not that crucial. Oh, why did I why did I stop that? That was unnecessary. Uh, you know what? We'll fight that and then we'll end it right there. So, you know what? Let's jump into it really quickly and get this over with. We deploy on a high hill overlooking uh, the enemy's position. And it's quite a strange deployment zone where we get an L-shaped point at the corner of the British point. as a village. And cavalry over here, cannon over there, all my Minutemen down here. And also note that the, all the Minutemen at this point are fully replenished. We'll quickly try to get into line here. Uh, we've got Garrison Militia. I'll be able to flank these guys though, so we can get them off the wall. And then we can see what ways we can attack the others. The regiment to look out for, I guess, is the... Worcester Regiment, but then again, oh damn, look at the Worcester Regiment, that looks pretty darn cool, I must say, and the thing is, you can put it so it plays like the British Grenadiers, which sounds pretty darn cool. And I love the yellow facing as well. Uh, we're going to put two. The Minutemen coming from over there. Then we're going to put three in front. In case. Uh, the British want to march out. And meet us. And we're going to put them. Across the wall on this side. So gentlemen. Run into position rather quickly. The Moyland. Dragoons will go to the flank. And then George Washington and his peanut brigade will uh, overlook the situation from the hill. There's a bit of fire coming from over here. However, they didn't manage to shoot anyone because it's kind of out of range. We'll hold fire. And I will wait to see the enemy well and truly within range. Before I open fire, and hopefully we can even spring these guys into action from the flank. We'll move pretty close. I'll set them in motion. Okay, the enemy has opened fire. Or well, the Worcesters. Worcester Regiment. Worcester. Has opened fire upon us. It's only the first rank that's firing. So it's not that devastating. Seems as though the British regular regiments aren't really going to be that much of a problem to start off with until they're going to continue marching after that fire. Maybe they thought they sent us away. We're going to open fire with the flank regiments. And now we're going to open across here. 
It's a bit like lopsided the fact that everyone in our regiments are firing at the same time. Oh look at that, the armed citizenry is falling. And yes. Alright, right. Moorland Dragoons. Put into action. I want you to murder all the loyalists. Um Let's see if we can't put this regiment just across here. So it continues to make sure that these guys are retreating. This regiment will move up to the uh, to the side there. The Warchesters are pulling back. And we've got victory. And here come the Moorland Dragoons. I'm going to continue just because uh, we want to get some extra chevrons for the cavalry. But uh, there, ladies and gentlemen, I think we can end the episode. But I guess we want to see the statistics first. So I'm going to chase them down and I'll get you uh, once uh, we're done with this. So if we thought that the first battle uh, of this video went great, this one went even greater. We only lost 20 men and they were all uh, comprised out of these two Minutemen groups. And we managed to slaughter the entire enemy force. Uh, where in which the Moylan Dragoons almost killed 400 of the enemy. Only gaining one chevron though. It's, I thought they would gain more. So this regiment uh, lost uh, 12. Uh, this one lost 8. Or I, maybe I should say, they're not really regiments are they? Veteran Minutemen groups. Or I'm not entirely sure how they would set it up. Anyways. George Washington claims another territory and uh, the British are losing territories fast. Now the question comes if Washington should continue to pursue this force and try to possibly even take some of this or if we should turn back and focus on what is coming from down south. But that will be for the next episode. So yeah, hopefully you guys enjoy this. And hopefully I'll see you guys for the next one. Bye. Thank you.